Hi all, I'm Kang Chen from Tsinghua University. I'm the leader of MetaFS. Renji Wang is the main developer. We have developed MetaFS and run this system on Pension Laboratories CloudBrain 2. This storage system won the first position in the SC20 IO500 list. Last year, Pension Cloud Print 2 was built in Shenzhen. The main purpose of this computer is to support AI computing. It has also very nice features for high storage performance. For example, the high performance RDMA network has a latency of 3 microseconds. Each node in the system is equipped with 6 NVMe SSDs, providing very high bandwidth. Since big data processing needs high performance for data accessing, we were interested in how to use these high performance devices to provide application level benefits. Thus, we were interested in how this scale of machine could perform in the IO500 test. Our first effort is to reach out for some burst buffer systems. It was not possible to install Intel DEALS on this computer because ARM CPUs have no support for non-volatile memory devices, so PMDK cannot be used. The DPDK and SPDK libraries are not well supported on ARM platforms. Gecko FS seems to fit this usage scenario because it is high performance, ready to use, and simple enough for tuning. Because of the hash-based metadata storage design, Gecko FS has good metadata performance at a large scale, according to their paper and technical report. We have tried to install Gecko FS on CloudBrain 2, and later we found it very difficult to run and scale. After digging into the details, we found several reasons for the difficulties. Gecko FS depends on many third-party libraries, such as Mercury, Argoboss. They cannot work well on the ARM platform. Especially, the lab fabric is not compatible with high silicon NIC. That was why we had to build our own file system to run on this computer. Fortunately, we do not have to start from nothing. MetaFS follows the overall architecture of GeckoFS. They both are based on hash-based metadata and data distribution. As you can see from the figure here, the metadata is stored in the machine calculated by hash value of file path. The file data are chunked. Each chunk is stored in the machine calculated by hash value of the file path and the chunk index. This design does not have the metadata bottleneck problem in traditional distributed file systems. Usually, for example, in LAST or BGFS or other file systems, a relatively small number of metadata servers are used. From the recent IO500 list, it is obvious that the metadata bottleneck will be the main performance blocker. Weaker I.O. and uh, DEALS all have similar designs of using no dedicated uh, metadata servers. Zoom in a little, this figure shows a little detail in MetaFS architecture. Left is the client side and the right is the server side. System call interception replaces the system calls from applications and translates, translates them to client side code of MetaFS. This interception layer is crucial to performance and adopted by many existing systems. DEALS uses a function call interception, and GeckoFS uses the same system call interception as in MetaFS. We have extended the system call interception library in DEALS to make it work for the ARM platform. The MetaFS client-side code talk to the server side through our customized RPC library. The server side uses RocksDB and the local file system to store the metadata and file data. The server side can actually be further improved by using SPDK. Since SPDK is now well supported in ARM platform, we have to resort to the RocksDB to store metadata and local file system to store data. 
you can find there's a system called interception code for ARM64 through the following URL. The interception code replaces a system called instructions with jump instruction at load time. This library was firstly developed by PMAN community and used in GeckoFS. We ported it to ARM64. Here are the steps to rewrite the system call instruction. The loader will identify the system call instructions. A branch instruction is used to replace the system call instruction to jump into an interceptor. Inside the interceptor, after preparing some information, the user defined the wrapper will be called. Wrappers will deliver the message information to servers. After processing, server will give the response. Finally, the intercepted syscall will return. We build our MetaFS file system using the Rust programming language. We have to say, without Rust, we cannot achieve our goal of building a new file system and run on this large-scale computer with 512 nodes. Rust is carefully designed to provide zero cost abstraction, and because of its memory usage model, our system can avoid many tricks, bugs such as segment faults and data races. It seems that the third-party libraries we used are awesome. They did not bring troubles during our development. We have to mention that the asynchronous support in Rust is critical for improving the I.O. performance without too much complexity. We heavily rely on the user space coroutines to achieve high-speed I.O. Rust supports a sync await syntax. It is convenient to use because you can write asynchronous functions that look like synchronous code. We use the default coroutine scheduler. It seems to work fine in MetaFS. We have noticed that GeckoFS use, uses a similar building block, which is Argobots. But Argobots cannot work stably in the ARM platform. In the communication layer, we use UCX, which is the only communication middleware that is supported in our platform. Since it is developed in C, we have a Rust wrapper for UCX. This is the overall architecture of UCX. Specifically, our Rust wrapper is based on UCP. In real-world communication, we choose to use UD as the underlying communication method. This is because UD can scale to 512 nodes, while other methods cannot. We build our RPC library directly on UCX. The tagging matching, tag matching APIs are used to manage the communication sources and destinations because we use the mechanism of a connection pool. Client-side vector I.O. was used to pack data and RPC arguments. At the Rust language level, our RPC is based on the Sadr framework and uses flex buffers protocol for zero-copy deserialization. This figure shows the mechanism of zero-copy deserialization. In fact, it is similar to pointers in C language, but in a safer way. This is how we can improve the performance of using vector, vectored I.O. on the client side. On the server side, our storage model is quite simple and straightforward. It is the same as GeckoFS. We use Strokes DB for metadata and use files on local file systems to store the file chunks. In the implementation, we have one or two UCX worker threads busy pulling events. Each such thread is said to have 16 RPC handler coroutines. They will do metadata operations and delegate blocking operations to I.O. threads. There is an I.O. thread pool. Each thread in the pool will be assigned to do some blocking work such as file read, write, iterators over rocks DB or respond to synchronous uh, f-sync requests. Here is a summary to show why MetaFS is fast. 
you can see that there is nothing mysterious behind MetaFS. System call intercept avoids the overhead of a context switch. LSM tree in RocksDB is used to boost the performance of updating small file, small data. Coroutines in Rust reduce the overhead of thread process context switch and reduce the programming efforts. Our customized RPC avoids memory copy. All the efforts actually try to use the RDMA performance as much as possible. So actually, last year we put a great effort into scaling our system to 512 nodes. Finally, we run our system using 255 clients and 254 servers. This is half the scale of the whole machine. This is a 10 node test. The key to 10 node test is to increase the load of client side because we can use as many server nodes as we have. Here we use 50 server nodes. You can see that the efforts above had not scaled to 512 nodes. After running for SC20, we know that the system had not squeezed out all the underlying hardware performance. The bottleneck is sitting in the implementation of MetaFS. Thus, we decided to run the RO500 test again on the same com computer. There are two goals here. The first one is to scale the system to 512 nodes. Uh, the second one is to stress at least one hardware resource to its limits, such as networking, storage, or CPU. Thus, for half a year, we did several further optimizations as listed here. We have reduced the memory usage to improve the overall scalability. The system can now run on 512 nodes. With some adjustments of file I.O. and optimizations for responding to F-Sync requests, the bandwidth is increased by 50%. There are some other optimizations, including small file optimization and find optimization. The small file optimization puts the first block of the file in the rocks DB. Thus, there will be no overhead touching the local file system for small files. This is quite a common optimization. Some last instances have this kind of optimization as well. You can see that this optimization increases the performance of various metadata tests. We also found some network anomalies. Here you can see that in IOR easy write test, because all the write operations are performed in parallel and are independent, the bandwidth usage should be stable and around the expected bandwidth. But the actual bandwidth usage is significantly lower than expected bandwidth. There must be some performance bottleneck in the system. After digging into details, we finally found out that the problem lies in the processing of sync requests from clients. Each client has to send out the fsync command to all servers before closing a file. The number of fsync commands is huge. This is the number of clients times the number of servers. Each server needs to process every fsync command from each client. In our first implementation, the server invokes sync system call every time it receives this command. This brings huge overhead. Later, we reduce the number of calling sync by using batching. After this optimization, the network usage looks much nicer and normal. Last year, we had no optimization for find. This function actually slows down the performance a lot. Because of the fast MD test hard, about 3 billion files are created in a single directory. pfind can only scan the files in a directory using one process. One process asks for each server to fetch the entries for the corresponding directory. pfind can do single directory parallel access if it can get help from the underlying file system. For example, the scans for subdirectories can be assigned to different processes. 
the big directory can then be accessed in parallel. The task will be gradually divided and assigned to more processes. This will lead to load imbalance. When there are many processes, it will impact the overall performance. For example, here, while firstly scanning the root, there are four directories under the root. So four processes are created to scan each directory. The second process starts to scan MD test and quickly find out that there are three subdirectories. Additional three processes are needed. It is easy to see that the scan loads, the scan loads are not evenly distributed to different processes. Since MetaFS stores the metadata in RocksDB, we have a very straightforward and efficient way to implement our own find. The workload is shredded by servers instead of by directories. Each server will do a local scan to match the find pattern requested by each client. And then the matched results will be merged to generate the final result. You can see that after this optimization, the find performance can be significantly increased by almost 200 times. This is the final score submitted to RSC 2021. And this is 10-node test result. This figure shows the scalability improvement over last year. The x-axis is the number of nodes and y-axis is the per-node score. The performance is improved, though still the per node performance is decreased with the increasing number of nodes in the system. That's all we see about MetaFS for now. Thank you, and we are happy to take any question.